Here we have a recliner. The thing you need to, to realize with the recliners is this can be a little tricky area when it comes to treatment because you have all these tufts and these folds and these cracks and crevices. These are all places that bed bugs will try to migrate to during the heat treatment to get away from the lethal temperatures. The easiest way to avoid a lot of that is just rock your recliner out because what will happen now is the air is able to pass completely through the piece of furniture. There's no blocks, there's no areas. If you get underneath here you can see everything's good and wide open under there. A lot of that metal under there is going to irradiate the heat very well so it's going to get nice and warm. You're going to eliminate a lot of those cold areas. When in doubt, if you're not really sure what's going to happen or if your airflow is going to work, I have the greatest airflow tool you've ever seen. That is what I was just about to ask. You take a piece of toilet paper, as you can see, which is pretty readily available in every household in America, I would hope. You take this particular piece of high-tech equipment, which we like to call an airflow device. You take this, and you would hold this behind the piece of furniture. If it's moving, you have air. If it's not moving, you don't have air. If you don't have air, you don't have heat. So what I will tell you is, once you get this room prepped, before you start doing any treatments, you're going to want to run the fan first, which I'm going to show. We'll cover that in just a minute. You're going to run your fan first. You're going to take this high-tech air gauge, and you're going to go around everything and make sure you have airflow. Okay. Uh, Tom, you've just shown me how to do preparation for the furniture. Right. I want you to tell me what you can do to the bed. I I'm glad you asked that. Mm -hmm. If I were to ask you in a bed bug treatment, if you were a bed bug, where would be some of the places here that you would think would be a good place to hide? Um, in the joints, maybe. Okay. Uh, in the pillows. Okay. Probably, and under the bed. Those are all three really good places. Yeah. Why do you think the pillows would be a really important place for bed bugs to be? Um, for them to access, uh, uh, to bite, easily. Yes. Um, bed bugs operate on CO2 okay as well as body heat when you exhale you're displacing the co2 to take in oxygen bed bugs know that that's a live host that's why a lot of times you'll see them towards the end of the bed where people's heads are the most that's why a lot of the bed bug bites you see will be on the upper body of whoever's having the bed bug infestation because that's where the bed bugs are going to be attracted to because of the co2 and the body heat those are all really good questions and we're going to address them right now um if you do have something like this laying on your bed, mm -hmm. this can be a challenge for the simple fact that you have two layers of, of cloth here. Okay. This could be a great insulator. Okay. So in other words, you have the heat coming in, but it's not penetrating this blanket. So what we have here is two layers of a blanket, comforter, whatever that may be, on top of another layer, which is the, the bedding of the bed itself. Okay. What you could have happen here is, with this situation the way it is now, mm -hmm. The temperatures, bed bugs need a very small temperature change in order to, to, to function. Okay. As much as, or little as five degrees can decide whether they live or they die. So say that this top of this is 115, 120 degrees, okay? Yes. That's a beautiful thing. You've got great kill temperatures. Okay. You pull this back, it's 105. So what so you've much. done is you've basically given the bed bugs a cold area they can migrate to. Okay. What I would suggest you do with something like this mm -hmm. is take it completely off the bed, <clears throat> And you can bring it over here, and you can drape it over your TV, just like this. That's going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to allow the air to completely get on this, this piece of fabric and no longer give the bed bugs harborage. And B, it's going to give a little bit of insulation to this television, which we've already, you know, it's not going to get damaged anyway, but this is just an extra measure of using your environment to make sure that everything is going to be good there. Then what you're going to want to do is you want to come over to this bed. You want to take these pillows. The best thing to do with pillows is try to lay them on something that's already open okay. so that they're not laying flat. Because what will happen is, again, cold spot. And then we'll pull the drawers open that are below it. Now what you've done is you've created a vortex. So the air is able to come in, come back out of the top. Recycle through the bottom, come out through the top. Airflow and electric heat is critical. If you do not have a good vortex, you do not have good return air, it's going to challenge the machine because what will happen, it works kinetically. It's a convective process. It has to take the room's air and change it over to heat. Okay. That can't happen if the air is not moving. 
That's why it's so critically important to make sure you have no air obstructions. That's why I'm going to such detail about getting these things available for air to get to. Okay. okay? okay. In this situation, you're fine here. All I would do with this is just raise it up a little bit like this. Then what you're going to want is, is another high-tech device. This is what we like to call an aeration crate, or you can call it a milk crate, a bread crate, whatever you like to call it. Aeration crate just sounds so much better and more, more scientifically. I need so, my best one. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab this mattress. Okay, I'm going to help you. Thank you. You're going to grab this mattress. You're going to put this crate right here. Okay. And you're going to slide it in there. Okay. What does that do now? Uh, so the conventional thought had been to take these mattresses and, and put them in a pyramid or an A-frame is what we like to call it. The only challenge you incur with that is if you stand those mattresses up where they're meeting and where they're sitting on the ground, you've created three cold spots. Okay. Where they meet, where they sit. You leave the mattress flat, you pick it straight up with aeration crates between them. Air is able to infiltrate and pass through everything freely okay. without any obstructions. I see. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to take this second aeration crate and we're going to come up here to the front of the bed. If you want to get on that side for me. Okay. And we're just going to pick this up. And again, we're just going to place this crate in between. Just kind of move, let me move this one over so we're center more. Okay, now. Well, Tom, we've just lifted the mattress. Right. What happens to the beddings? Well, what you're going to want to do is you want to try to leave this bedding in place if possible. And I'll tell you, because what, what tends to happen in these situations, if people remove this bedding, what, what would you do with the bedding if you removed it? Uh, probably put them at a place where heat can easily. So if you were to, so say you were to take this bedding and you were to ball it up and lay it in the middle of the floor. It means uh, the you, bed bugs will have that cold. Exactly. If you leave it in place and leave it flat and heat everything up at a steady, good temperature, you're not going to have that issue. What tends to happen is if someone strips this bed and they take the say say you were to strip this bed and take the bedding out of here. We have moved the bed bugs from... Exactly. What you've done now is you've, you've taken one infestation and moved it to another infestation. So your best bet in, in any situation is to try to leave as many things in place as possible. The biggest thing you're going to have with bedding and the biggest thing you're going to have with a bed as far as bed bugs go are the box spring. Your biggest challenge to controlling bed bugs in a bed is going to be your box spring because you have the wooden slats and all the joints where everything's screwed together. Just a lot more places for bed bugs to hide, a lot more places for them to harbor. So, what you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to pick this up. And see your aeration crate? You want to stuff it right in one of those little, see one of those little squares right there? Yes. So now you got air, can get underneath here. In this particular case, you have two twin mattresses with a full size on it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. The only, the only challenge you may have here is the area between these two but see fortunately there's, some there's a pretty good gap in there they're not they're not together if they were if they were together like if you had a situation where these were touching and they were really tight that would be okay. something you need to address separately okay but the fact that you're able to put your hand in there the air will penetrate air can penetrate that sure, sure. okay so next thing you want to address is the headboard so what you want to do it's, it's fine it's not going to go anywhere you're good what you want to do with the headboard is in a lot of hotel rooms, where's that headboard? It's affixed uh, to the wall. Normally fixed. They're normally fixed to the wall, correct? Mm -hmm. Not an issue. If you can take a credit card or any kind of business card or anything of that nature and run around the edge of it and it's able to go around it unobstructed, okay. the air can get through. Nice. The other thing is there's metal brackets behind that yes. that hold it up. Those metal brackets are going to get hot. Mm -hmm. They're going to radiate that heat across the face of the brackets. Okay. So, not really a big issue. This particular case, you've got just a freestanding headboard. Mm -hmm. Great thing because you don't really have to worry too much about, you know, places for them to get between the wall and the headboard. Okay. There'll be free circulation of air. Correct. Sure. The legs themselves of the bed, a lot of times they have those big rubber feet on them, so they'll sit right on the ground. Yes. If that's the case, once you get probably three quarters of the way through the treatment, mm -hmm. You can take the aeration crates and everything out, okay. and you can jack them up under the bed frame. 
you can just slide them in under the bed frame, pick that bed frame up just a little bit off the ground. So suspended. Right, so that, and what, what you'll see a lot of times in a heavily infested unit, if you do that, when you pick that leg up, there's going to be a bunch of bed bugs in that little circle where that foot, where that foot was sitting on the ground because okay. they've all migrated to that cold area. Okay. Okay? So now, we've covered basically the preparation that you need to take care of in a hotel room. Now, let's get to the fun part. Let's get it 